Okay. On to the next s tune. Stune. Song and tune put together inside of one. Kind of like the song we're about to listen to from Mrs. Lizzie McAlpine and Phineas. All I see is my Twitter timeline being like, Yo, you gotta listen to Lizzie. You gotta listen to Lizzie. She just put out an album and dropped that on Phineas. Okay, so the single is called Hate to Be Lame featuring Phineas. I've been doing some hot takes on the channel recently, okay? <laughs> In case you haven't noticed, been dropping some truth bombs here and there. And you know what I'm gonna say? I don't hate to be lame. I think it's kind of cool to be lame. I guess I might need to re rethink my description of lame. But I don't know, maybe we should just listen to the song. It's always on the tip of my tongue. I read an article on the internet, told me that that's how you know you're falling in love. Oh. Hate to admit, but it might be true. Oh my God, this piano. Hate to admit, but I think you knew. Hate Whoa. to be lame, but I might love you. Oh, it's always on the tip of my tongue. Oh, Phineas, we're right back where we started from. Ma'am, what is happening to my body right now? Mistakes are the reason that I made it back to you in time. Would there be some butterfly effect? What if we never met? What if the stars hate to admit, but I think you knew? Oh, Goosey's running up and down my spine hate right now. To be lame, but I might love you. Wait, wait. I need to listen to this again. There are so many little gems and production elements in here. That swelled up to be something really big. Oh my God, I was not expecting that. It's always on the tip of my tongue. Gr fantastic, fantastic way to start a song. I firmly believe you are kind of told that the chorus is the most important part of the song. And they make us a, a good point. The chorus is really, really important. But to me, the most important fart part, uh, fart of the song? The most important part of the song is actually the first lyric. If that lyric is bad, the chances no, that someone's gonna click off or pause your song or click onto it or skip it, go up exponentially, even if the chorus is a slap, because you, they don't even give you, give you a chance. That starting line, it's on the tip of my tongue, you instantly start wondering, what? What are you feeling? It piques interest. That is just such a fantastic way to start a song. An article on the internet told me that that's how you know you're falling in love. Relatability. Read an article on the internet. Beautiful, regular, everyday terminology lyrics. Yes, Phoebe Bridgers does do a phenomenal job of this as well. By the way, go check out the Phoebe Bridgers music. But it might be true. Oh, the moving chords that feed into that little pre. Hate to admit, but I think you knew. Also, melody resolving in that way with the chords is beautiful. Be but I might love my love. When she reaches that note, it's the only time she hits that note in the song so far. So that, it makes it impactful. And when you leave off a pre-chorus like that, leading into the, into the chorus, you know, the very important part of the song that you're gonna wanna have in the listener's ear, it's like a little beacon saying, hey, hey brain. Something sick's about to fucking happen. It's always on the tip of my And it's and it's with Phineas and Bo and her. But and there's no He doesn't do a verse. He I love that he doesn't do a verse. And it's not just like a typical kind of feature. He comes in in the chorus because he needs that Oh, that deep voice harmony. We're right back where we started from. Ooh. Hate to Ooh, 
you hear that, oh, there's a little riser in the back that was side-chained and it was going. Something is side-chained, in case you don't know. It means that it's like dipping whenever usually a kick or a snare from the drums come in and it gives it a natural like flow of like when you omit the actual drum in that and it's just the it can create a really nice suspenseful moment oh and that four on the f oh that four kick you hear it kind of stuttering in it feels like the walls are closing in And it doesn't it doesn't go on forever and it's just that little moment of craziness and like oh. like imagine if she started the song out with something like that that wouldn't feel nearly as dramatic as it does in that moment when you have all these building elements like she's been she's been building to that moment from the very beginning of the song ah oh, that re that just that repeating same chord over and over again, not played, but sampled and then chopped and then stacked over and over again. Oh, it just gives it this disconnected, like, like you're in this broken moment. Dude, oh my God, I'm sorry. I wasn't expecting to get this deep into this. This is really, really good. In the back of my mind. And what an incredible entrance to have a verse. Maybe my mistakes. Also the fact that the vocals have like no reverb, like they are dry, as the Sahara Desert, baby. And that just draws the attention so much more to them. Hate to admit, but I think you know. And now she's doing the harmony and he's doing the main part. They're switching it. It just gives it a different, like, they could have totally had her go back. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful arrangement. Hate to be lame, but I might love you. Staying on that little seven for a moment. Staying in that little moment right there before you resolve down. Also, resolving down feels more vulnerable, like the song is, is going to feel. Why don't we just dive into the lyric? It, the ending does feel like it comes out of nowhere. Honestly, I would say that a lot of the song feels like it comes from left field. I feel like there's not eight bars of this song that go by that there isn't a new element coming in or leaving or changing. Lyrical dancers about to eat this up. Oh, dude, I can see those contemporary mother truckers already. Rolling on the ground, dude. I, I love dance. I actually used to dance. I used to pop, lock, and drop it. I don't know if you can probably tell, but you know, I'm kind of I'm kind of sick, dude. I'm kind of gnarly at dancing low-key. In a way, I feel like I'm almost a contemporary dancer. <laughs> Rolling around acting through the lyrics when they move me. Yeah, they're gonna go crazy. Let's look at some of these lyrics. I can put you in first class. <laughs> you see, now I just want to hear the actual glamorous song. Thanks, Jack Harlow. Lizzie in verse one starts off by saying, it's always on the tip of my tongue. Oh, verse one, tip of the tongue, sorry. I might need a credit in this goddamn song, okay? So thank you. I read an article on the internet, told me that's how you know you're falling in love. Don't really trust what's on the internet, but maybe just this once. Ooh, oh. She makes an exception, but then she goes back. You see the picture. Girl on laptop, looking for help. I might be in love. And the chorus goes, hate to admit, but it might be true. Hate to admit, but I think you knew. Hate to be lame, but I might love you. Just a three line, but it paints that little image in your brain. It's scary, it's frightening. In verse two, it's always on the tip of my tongue. Same lyric, starts off the same. Why change it, right? It's a great starting line. But I stop myself from saying it. She knows she's in love, but she doesn't want to say the word. Tell myself it's not the right time or something dumb, but then you kiss me like you do and we're right back where we started from. I was wrong, this isn't sad. Really what it is, is the torment of emotions that she's feeling, bottling up this love because she's afraid that if she says it and the, and the person she's saying it to doesn't say it back, she's, she's gonna be embarrassed. She hits us with that chorus again and then goes right into a bridge with, do I love him? Do I need him? Do I want him? Do I care enough to say that I love him that I need him. Phineas comes in with that verse three and says, it's always in the back of my mind. Kind of like on the tip of my tongue, but reversed, right? And he's speaking from the reverse perspective. Maybe my mistakes are the reason that I made it back to you in time. 
If I could rewind, would there be some butterfly effect? What if we never met? What if the stars never aligned? Now, this verse does kind of confuse me a little bit. I don't exactly know what perspective he's coming from. Chat, passing it to you. Anybody want to explain this, this verse from old Phineas? And welcome back to the editor's notes, where I tell you how I actually feel about this song, even after watching the video myself and listening to this song multiple, multiple times. And I got to say, Lizzie, you got something special, man. This song is... So good, dude. Like from the writing to the production to the music video that I missed. <laughs> it only has 10,000 views. I checked out her YouTube channel. It only has 65K. Phenomenal song. Phenomenal song. Phenomenal production. I forgot to even mention who produced the track. Big old shout out to Philip Etherington. Etherington? Etherington? I hope I'm saying that right. And Aaron with an H... Ebbage. And based on their credits of other songs, it seems like Lizzie is kind of their main artist, which is very, very interesting. These guys are so good that they should be working with a multitude of different people. But the fact that they've just done Lizzie's stuff so far makes me super hopeful for her career. I can't imagine them honestly missing. But yeah, to top it all off, this collab even happened in such a cool, genuine way. She just sent a DM to Phineas on Instagram. <laughs> like, isn't that insane? That she just, just a DM. And he was like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> insane. Lovely, beautiful song. Very happy that I found it. Can't wait to listen to the album. I feel like this song is really solid, dude. And as an intro into Lizzie, it's definitely definitely got me interested in listening to the album. So thanks for watching. If you liked it, like it. If you want to subscribe and hit the bell notification, that'd be sick. If you want to support the channel, best way to do that is through Patreon. It's only five bucks. And here's another video you can watch right now. If you're not busy or doing anything, no pressure. It's cool. If you got to go, if you got to go, you got to go. You know, I get it. But if, if you're trying to hang, it's pretty good. It's pretty good.